He's so freaking cool. And the best part about this is, it's actually Tremor as well. A Tremor guy that actually uses purple attacks. Would you believe it? Would you actually believe it? That would actually fix a couple of our issues that we have in our usual Tremor team. Now, technically speaking, for envy skills, I always had Rodeon around with suppression. But this, seeing how this is literally a skill 1 attack, is going to be super handy for the Mauler team. Like, really, really handy. But, there's one small issue with this ID. Can't really use it right now. Our current team relies on haste, bind, blood, and paralysis. And that ID has neither of them. Which is going to be a slight issue, seeing how uh, on first day there's going to be the next season update. In which case we are going to reach an area in where, where I'm probably forced to use Heathcliff. And right now, I don't really have any idea that could fit the requirements that we have for our current team. I cannot get those three out of them. And do need haste and bind from those two. And my salt, he's just so handy. He has he has the ability, once he has haste, to give us the much needed bleed count. And I think his passive also gives us bleed count for reassurance. Uh, not really. But still, I need the bleed count for reassure. That's the thing. Mm, difficult. Very, very difficult. But then again, I think we have to go through two events before I actually reach the area where Heathcliff is going to be required, so it's going to be fine. But still. Oh, my sword. There's a high chance that I have to kick you out for Heathcliff. There's a very high chance. Unless, of course, along the next couple of weeks, they're going to release another Heathcliff ID that's somehow replaces the other two in some regards, maybe with a yellow ego or something like that. Would be great! Because I really don't want to let the rhino guy go. That's the first time he showed emotions! He showed emotions that he didn't want to go to the hatchery again! It would be a shame! But at the same time, I like those two too! Ah, maybe they're going to give us a seventh slot, huh? They already increased the team number by one. Maybe, maybe they're going to increase it again for Heathcliff's chapter. There, there is a small chance for that, right? There is a small, very small chance for that. I'm going to put all of my bets on that. If not, I guess we have to get, get a little bit creative over here. <laughs> oh well. Okay, where were we? All right, Don had a bright idea to check out a hidden door. An undiscovered door that was deemed unnecessary, but I guess we are going to check it out after all. An unexpected journey. 5.5 slash 3. We entered a back door Don Jacon claimed to have seen. In it was what appears to be a factory. Clearly not her first time in this establishment, so she already snuck in here. Good to know. Don Jacon calls over to someone. Who are you calling? Huh? Are you kidding me right now? I can't... I can't even bring my team! Oh, come on, game! I just, I just got them all ready! I just got them all ready! And only those two! Great! Just... just great! Uh, Rapture it is, huh? Rapture it is! 39 should be good enough. Yeah, I'm sure they can handle it. But still, that was the first time when we could have tried out the bleed team with Krakow, Rioshu, Mesot. And we're actually doing this. We're actually going past the boundary again. Oh, Dawn, this, this is going to go bad. This is going to be so bad. A dark, silent night. All are sound asleep. Thus we assemble. This better be worth the trouble, Don. 
it will be worth every trouble, of course. Now, come hinter. We quietly and sneakily followed Don, taking care not to make any noise. Otherwise, we must, might have some explaining to do, huh? <laughs> Are we really about to cross this line? Bloody hell, Les! Don't you know what happened the last time that I crossed it? He barely died! Or rather, he almost died! <laughs> Alas, but it will be different this time. All we must do is follow the corridor immediately to the right of this delineation and open the door here. So, they are the symbols that she was talking about, right? Past the door, through the window, the symbol Don Jafon mentioned shimmered. Symbols that an seems to indicate a sack, a wrap present, and what appears to present fancy clothes. So, uh, are they the red sack and the reindeer man symbol? Precisely! And how can you say that so sure? Right, I suppose you're the expert with these things, eh? Huh? I'm going in. Wait, huh? Hold on! We, we haven't even checked the door yet! <laughs> Before I even had a chance to stop him, Heathcliff barged into the door, and we found ourselves almost getting dragged in by his sheer feather. Okay. Oh ho! We found ourselves in a rather sizable room. This place was decorated with numerous Christmas themed ornaments, warm cozy lighting reflecting off the wood flooring, and a maze of conveyor belts were installed all over the place. So this place is the Christmas factory? A factory, eh? Yeah? Quiet! Quiet? Or oh, quiet? Huh? What are those things? Those little children like... <coughs> Hulk! It is I! Don! Who's... Who's Hulk? What the hell is she doing? I thought that this was a sneak mission! The little figure Heathcliff indicates didn't exactly look like the children's. They all froze for a moment before turning around in our direction. They weren't humans, that's for sure. Give me a moment, I have already paralyzed with these feathers. What happened to the sneaking and peeking thing? Oi, clockhead! Something is coming this way! He makes squeaky sounds. It's cute, even though he looks uh, kind of muscular. Okay. A small but larger than others around it figure scurried over and stood before us. Ah, Lady Dawn, you finally grace us with your presence once again. Oh man, Lady Dawn? And just as we did before, poof, appearing from the most unexpected places again. Oh me? Uh. Who's this, Dawn? Hmm, the one who shall grant us the wonderful gift indeed. He rubbed his hand, or what I assume to be his hands, together, looked up at us and started. Pleasant to make your acquaintance, Ome. You must be Lady Dawn's friends, Ome. My name is Dodura, or rather Doduro, a gnome who works at the gift factory, Ome. And why, of course, I make gifts here. Oh, me. A gnome? Indeed, a gnome. Was that supposed to be obvious? Weren't the factory workers for the Santa Claus supposed to be elves or something like that? Either way, what are gnomes anyways? So they are not humans, right? Yes, these fellas are not humans. They are gnomes. Yes, go of course not. Humans, um, or me? Hom hom? Huh? <laughs> Didn't think no humans were allowed in the city. They are not abnormalities or distortions either. They are something else. The, the city! I knew it. Well, why does it matter if they are not humans? What truly matters is the heart with which they commit themselves to work. And that's it. Of course, of course. You're absolutely right, my lady or me. Didn't that the door gnome said something weird about the city just now? Yeah? So, that wasn't just me, huh? Well, home. <laughs> or me? Well, or me, was it? The Stodora cuts in our conversation. 
Do the friends of Lady Dawn wishes for any presents on me? Say, we have fancy clothes and powerful weapons on me. Or delicious cookies on me. Fancy clothes? Wait, so you really have them? Looks like we've got a winter on me. Well, well. Then please, this way. The gnome said something about introducing us to the reception hall and led us to a certain room in his scurry gate. Okay. Seems more like a storage space than a reception hall. Oh, ho, behold! There's a warm fireplace and a table in this cozy place. What more could they possibly ask for for a reception area? And we have some delicious refreshment ready for you as well, Omi. Please wait a moment, and I'll be right back with the gifts you want, Omi. And there he jumps off. The gnome bowed, opened the door, and scuffed out of the room. Are reception halls usually this barren? I've never been in one before, so I have no idea if this is what they were supposed to look like. But I had to ask. Especially because it was starting to get pretty obvious, even with my rather limited experience, that there was something off about this whole situation. I have once heard the rumor that this kind of decor has been catching on in recent years. Did it? Yeah, I've heard that too. Apparently it's popular for some blockers to just deliberately leave their stuff lying around in some half-finished looking building and stuff. Is that what this is? Uh. Still thy heart, Manager Esquire. I shall personally be responsible for this expedition and claim myself a shiny gift. Uh huh. If push comes to shove, I could just snap some of these. I saw them packing some shiny, expensive looking stuff over there. You gonna steal from them? Don't you remember what happened the last time you stealed anything? We had a fight with a big brother. Don't steal anything around here, okay? Here! No fury this time, Heathcliff! Has the incident with the hair coupon already left thy mind? Ah, blimey! Fine. Heathcliff was as foul-mounted as always, but it was evident from his relaxed expression that his anxiety was starting to ease. Maybe the fact that we are here, about to find what we were looking for, was a comforting thought. Heathcliff, is it that important that you dress well for this occasion? Huh? Oh, yeah. A rather delicate but gently smoldering perch. Calm, silent air. A perfect atmosphere to bring up uncomfortable subjects for some honest heart to heart. Or is someone waiting for you there? Someone who you would like to dress up for? Well, I suppose I'm not completely wrong about that. Is it actually a wedding? I mean, Gregor already prepared his dress. Huh? Could it be? <laughs> Oh, a secret, is it? Don excitedly and loudly dragged her chair up close to Heathcliff. I have to go back as a successful man, as someone of grave worth, so that they know that I've changed, that I'm no longer that witless brigand Heathcliff. That is why I have to dress posh when I return, to appear like... A man of quality. Oh, so you want to prove your worth to someone? I see. Had someone stoked a fire of envy in thy stomach? Is this about revenge? Like Ishmael? Maybe. Revenge. Heathcliff leaned back on his chair. It creaked as he rocked gently back and forth. There was a look of deep introspection on his face, which was, if my memory serves me right, a first. Well, I suppose you call it revenge, but what I really want to do is make her regret. Yeah, that's what this is. So it is about her, another her. I'll show them. I will tremble over those bastards and thought I was worth shit. So that she will regret not choosing me. So that she will feel that regret down to the deepest reaches of her heart. Oh, is it an X? Maybe the wedding part is not that far off after all. Hmm. I proved to Katie that... Alright, I can't... Katie or Katie? That there was no better man 
for her than I. Katie. Heathcliff's eyes trembled a little as he speaks her name. He might still have feeling for her. He mentioned that name before. His eyes trembled then too. This Katie must be someone pretty important to you. Of course, it's bloody important. So, uh, what happened between the two of you? Between you and that Katie? Catherine, to be exact. I just like to call her Katie. It's a long and complicated story. Uh huh. Allow my intuition to speak for thee. This Katie must be thy lover, is it not? Wait, wait, wait. Is that what she's to you? Huh? No! It's nothing like that! Okay, now he's a little bit stumbling around, around as well, Sir Heathcliff. Of course, it, maybe a little bit. Uh huh. <laughs> His stuttering makes it clear on a bad day. Okay. This disposition was as Bruce as always. I could clearly see that he couldn't stop himself from smiling from a mere mention of a name. And that gave me more than enough answers. Every sinner had a reason for joining Limbus Company. So... Maybe he'd have joined Limbus Company for this... Kafi person. Hmm. Makes me wonder what kind of a person she might be. Someone that special. That precious to Heathcliff. Don't be so overdramatic. That ain't me. Now, I do this not out of the application as a manager. But I'm starting to think that I want to help you out. So that you could be the best man you can ever be for her. Indeed. We shall all be. People of quality. See? What just happened? I heard the door open in that very moment. It wasn't the reception hall's door, the one made out of wood. It wouldn't make that sound that I just heard. This sound came from over there, away from us, from the dark corner of the room. Then we hear sounds of metal scrapping against wood. It was accomplished by a howling blizzard. So those are slate marks, huh? Okay. The huge slate made its way across the wooden floor. On the mark that were already on the floorboard, it was flaked by several gnomes. The slate was red, and the sack on it were either black or red. But they were all... Hmm? Littered with flesh and blood. Guys, Dodoro, we've got our next batch of ingredients, right? Here, Omi. Ingredients? Phew, my bag, Omi. Come on, friend, Omi. Just think about the looks on our friend's faces when they open their presents, Omi. All is going to be worth it, of course. We'll worth it. Uh, uh? Here, Omi. Heal me! The gaggle of gnomes who were walking in our direction as they shattered and gossip froze in place upon noticing us. Quit lollygagging, you me! Quit chit chatting and help us out, me! We got a lot of process, on me! Besides, we've brought some life on this time, too! Oh, me? Think I saw some second the slate move. What? Are you. No, wait. They were trashing! Like something was trying to escape! What is that? Grab your weapons, girl. <sighs> what is the matter with thee? These fellas are but hardworking. Hello? Is somebody out there? Please help! Get me out of here! Oh, me! What a joyous day, oh, me! This one is fresh, oh, me! No. But hey! They're humans, oh, me! Did Manager Dodoro bring them in, oh, me? How did he manage to bring in. Human, so fresh on me. So, all along, thy factory has been. Oh boy. I could hear a familiar voice coming from the other door in the room as Don stood there, flabbergasted. The door done a blunder on me. That slate wasn't supposed to come here on me. Don't you worry on me. Just a little game between us gnomes. A game? That's your excuse? 
Master Dodoro. Dodoro's listening on me. Tell me the content of this sex. Raw materials for presents, of course, on me. Besides, Lady Dawn on me. Dodoro's prepared those fancy clothes for you and your friends to wear on me. Why don't we head right out to wear? What, what raw materials are they? Oh me! The door is tires of lies, oh me! Human, oh me! Humans like you! That mouth, that, that saw blade! Ugh. You lot! What did I say about using those storage spaces, oh me? I told you this one was off limit, oh me! What? Are you going to deliver nothing but disappointments to our neighbors, oh me? Even now, they await gifts from our factory, oh me! Oh, oh my bad, oh me! Oh, me! And I already told the factory directors to look forward to these batches and... Oh. Huh? What was I thinking? This was absolutely not worth it. I know what you're thinking, Glockhead. So quit signing and start strategizing. You've got to get out of here, right? Yeah. Yeah, sitting here and feeling sorry for myself wouldn't do anything. It never did. Got it. Grab your tools on me! Fresh! Local product pro materials coming up on me! Right then. Let's crack on, you little shitbags! So we have to way find our way out of here. Is this whole event going to be about Heathcliff and Don? And only them? I guess an army of little gnomes? Cherry gnome? Let's see. Gain poise? Poise count. And they can inflict binds. Fresh meat, oh me. Looks living, oh me. It's able to heal its SP and gain even more poise. So all they're doing is gaining up. Gaining poise and boost their attack if you don't break through the chills. No use on me. Let's see, let's see. And the passives? Every surviving enemy gives this unit 2% chance of flipping hit. A maximum amount of 95%. Okay. Mine on me. Turn end when there are more surviving enemies than surviving allies. Gain more haste and more attack. So, preferably, we're going to kill them all at the same time. Right? Pretty much. Well, nine is easy to beat. Let's go for strong move right away. There we go, my Don! Don's already breaking through. Are we going to get a stagger? Because it seems like they're a little bit tanky. Oh yeah, they are quite tanky indeed. Okay. We need to make sure to break through the shield. He's going to go for a counter. So we're going to roll out, and then we're going to boost up our, our, our weight. It's not going to boost our attack, so we should probably go for the red attack instead. There we go. No issues whatsoever for our heat clip. Okay, the first one is defeated, the other one is going to get haste and strength, but doesn't really make a difference at this point of time. Mm. Gonna get a new purple attack over there, so maybe this combination is going to be better for us. We just need to make sure that we are able to finish this guy in this turn, right? Which is just enough. Okay, second round. Oh, I just noticed there are four waves of this. Ooh, that might be a bit of an issue then. A little bit of an issue. But we'll see about that, Fred. We will see about that. Just go all out. We need to get some lust going for our ego gifts. I don't really have access to that many OE skills around here. This might also be a little bit of an issue, but we'll see about that. We are able to stagger him. Yes, we were. Are we able to get him here as well? Not quite. He's going to get a count as well. But that's going to be fine, and next turn we are certainly going to finish him off without issue. I think at least. Are you different? You can technically inflict paralysis on us, but other than that, 
pretty much the same as the other one. Okay. Strong enough. Let's go for the purple attack first. Couple of greens. Green is not strong enough. Then a follow up with green and even more lust. Okay, that should be good enough. Which turn is this? Is this already turn 4? I think we have around... Alright, it would be best for us to finish all of them off in two turns each. So that we have a bit of a puffer during the last turn. This is already turn 6. Okay. Could certainly be worse. It could always be worse. That's an easy win. Let's go for the strong attack. 13 is good. I don't have a single pride skill. There's a decent chance that you might be able to win this. It's not the best, but a decent chance, so I'm going to bet on that. Maybe if we're lucky we're going to get this- Okay, we got a stack on that guy. That's really good. Counter's always going to get through. The other two are just fine. There we go. It's going to be enough damage to get him into the stagger range. Not quite enough for the kill, but it's fine. That guy's also staggered. That's enough to kill. Kill. It's just extra damage. Double red. Might be for the best. Yeah, let's form a red line. If we boost up the damage for the red attacks, we can at least ensure that uh, we might be able to finish all of them off in this turn. Another stagger, that's perfect. Perfect. Keep the rapture going. Good job! We didn't even need to use all of our- Oh god, the big guy! We didn't even need to use all of our tech just yet. Dodoru! I see. Bind and poise. 10 is not so bad. 4, 4, 8, 12. More poise. Local raw material of me. Gain even more poise. Damage plus 20% for the last coin. 3 poise. Damage plus 20% for the last coin. 2 poise. Does not consume poise count. The bonus plant damage equal to poise. Okay, so I really need to make sure to win this attack. If this unit shield has still has shield, gains one additional attack buff than the other two. And he has the same passives as the, as the other three nodes. Okay, eh, that doesn't really look so bad, right? At least for now. Strong enough. Let's go for the purple attack. Kinda wanna save the green attack, but I guess, yeah, there's another one coming up, so it's free to go. This should be able to win. That should be able to win. 13. It's kinda pushing it a little. If I could boost it with even more green attacks. I can't really risk that many hits with Dawn. But then again, her stack up threshold is around 50%. She should be able to endure it either way, but still, I don't really want to get that crazy on the little guys just yet. I might need a stronger t stronger attacks for the Dodoro guy. But then again, I'm not entirely sure how much health he even has in comparison to the little guys either. Either way, we're going to get a bunch of staggers on at least three gnomes, right? Surely we're going to get a stagger on three gnomes at least. There we go. That's my Dawn. 200 health isn't really so bad, especially with Rupture. 13. Another good hit. 30% is already gone. This guy is also gone. 
Okay, that was to be expected. That was to be expected. To our staggered. That guy goes for the strong move. That's not so bad. That's enough to kill. That should be enough to kill as well. Turn is on 9. That's fine. That's going to get through. Can't really do anything against that, so you're just... Oof, that's gonna do so much damage. How much health do you have? It's gonna stagger you as well. I mean, if I have the HP boost via the defense skill, we might be able to survive it. I mean, the 108 is just if he gets all the head tosses. His sanity is currently at zero. It's a 50 50 gamble. It's a 50 50 gamble, and I'm just going to count on it that it somehow works. <laughs> I can't look. I can't look. Oh, the Cliff. Maybe you can get the. Maybe you can get the stagger before it comes to that. Oh no! Wait! Maybe? Oh my god, okay, we don't have we don't even have to go for it. It's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> Good! Good job, you two! Good job! Oh I guess it was a good idea for us to go for the defense after all, because it was slower than us. So that we could uh, push the other attacks forward. Ah <sighs> so there were some failure swords, eh? Uh. Yeah. The fault lies with me. The light of confidence has completely faded from Don's face. So did her enthusiastically voice. No, I should have fought this plan through. After all, we are the manager. We we should have double-checked on your plan before we actually just ran straight into that, huh? Well, if we were to find someone to blame, the biggest fault would lie to me with me, you know, the manager. Maybe I should have turned around the moment I sensed that something was off. <sighs> Alas. With that, Don marched towards the now abandoned light. This is... Several mutilated body tumbled onto the ground as soon as Don and ditched the knot, tying the sack. Damn it. I was afraid that this was what we would find inside of the sacks. There were a total of seven also people in the sex. They were all missing a few limbs. They were barely breathing, and some of them had already perished. I've never seen their style of clothing before. Looks like they're pretty far from where we were. I've seen similar worn and torn clothes in the back streets, but the clothes they wore was of material and style that I've never seen before. The back door must have sent us pretty far away. Faust did tell me that each district within the city had different culture and such, so it doesn't really matter, does it? They all die soon, and it's not like you can turn the clock for them either. Let's just get back to the bus. Nay, here! This person here is still intact! Hark! Get a hold of thyself! Are thou not the one who requested our help earlier? It's a child! <coughs> Oh no! Who are you? And they make a cut right here! <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Come on! They didn't even give me his name! Or her name? It's always a bit hard to tell, right? <laughs> oh well. 60%. Yeah, I guess uh, Heathcliff is kind of strong in the seventh suit. What's this? There's some shadows at the door. Is that us? That one looks a little bit like my sword, though. Oh well. The monstrous gifts! What popped out of the sack we found atop the slide was several mutated body and a small child. It looks like they were kidnapped here. I wonder what happened. Well, we're about to figure that out. Oh! Oh no, I can't- No, I can't- <laughs> can't bring the- I can't game! What is he doing? <laughs> doing oh come on uh yeah S something like that i guess i don't even remember the, the turn numbers anymore 
Oh well. Okay, other team, let's let's go. I guess you guys noticed something, maybe? Um hello little guy. Your clothes are all weird looking. I guess you're not from the village. Village? The child was dressed in a torn and fading clothes. From the way she looked at us, I could tell that she found us rather fascinating. She soon woke up from her momentary shock, so it is a girl. Okay. Anyways, um, thank you for saving me. My name is... Crayon? Like the color? And, uh... A clock worth teeth? Huh? The kid pointed at me and backed away in terror. The hell are you talking about? That's Clockhead! My name's Stunt, okay? <laughs> Clockhead? But I heard that the Clockworth teeth would look like clocks and... I guess I also heard that they don't show up this high. I've never seen a monster like that before though. Monster? Ah, but they are not a monster! This is none other than our very own Manager Esquire! Thanks for the intro, I guess. But I, I can't hear anything but the tick-tocking of a clock. Well, Mention Choir has their reasons. Are Dao and Hunch? Yeah. Looks like the other people who are direct here with me weren't so lucky, though. The child looked at the mutated corpses with a despondent look on her face. Don casted a sympathetic gaze. So they were all neighbors from thy village. Yeah, but our village will soon send the hunters to save us. As long as they can get here, they can... Hunters? I wasn't sure what exactly she was talking about, so I was about to ask her what she meant. She probably means something like a fixer again. Psst, what's But this reception hall, storage room, suddenly began to fill with gas of unknown origin. What is it now? <coughs> Quick, hold our breath! I think that's already too late. An old plum of gas, its hue green and red, begins to fill the room. This gas is the same from when I was kitten. The three of them, including Crayon, passed out and slumped to the floor. Yep, yeah, something like that happened before, when we walked right into a room full of toxic gas, which literally killed everyone. Mm. Looks like this gas only knocks them out though, that's a relief at least. Guess I should consider myself lucky that my clock head isn't affected by these kind of things. But we might want to pretend that we're also asleep, huh? I gotta hide. Oh, the freaking gnomes. As soon as I hid myself in a corner, a crowd of gnomes rushed through the same door the door came in from. Gas mask? So they are using sleep gas on us. Oh, me! Is that all that's left of our manager, the Doro Ome? Oh, me! All that talk of snagging three top notch raw materials. And now look at him, oh, me! A pile of meat, oh, me! Oh, me! One of me, two of me, three of me. All accounted for, I suppose, of me. They're all fast asleep with the sleep powder. So don't worry uh, so don't you all worry yourself about harming the goods, of me. Well well, let's move to the goods, of me. He picked up Don, Heathcliff and Crayon, one by one, and loaded them onto the slides. With that, they left, closing the door behind them. Great! And what's the stunt they're going to do now? <laughs> and for it all, I couldn't do anything but watch, because we can't fight. Right, well, looks like this is my time to shine. I'll, I will rescue the three of them. No way. <laughs> I should have listened to what Ishmael offered me to teach me some self-defense. Yes, you should have. You should have. <laughs> ah, what do I do? This harsh truth dawn on me every time we face total annihilation. The truth that on my own I'm just completely useless. If there were us, I could at least bring them back, but none of the sinners were here with me. What good am I without them? 
it's a miracle that I managed to survive this far. Well, if you think about it. Miracle? What miracle? Come on, get a hold of your s- <laughs> Great, and now I'm hearing things as well. Oh, you're not hearing things, manager. We are all here. Sinclair! Rodion! Do you even know what a mess it was up there when we realized that the three of you just vanished into thin air? I bolted up and looked towards the voices. Then I saw another door. And from it, the rest of the sinners appeared, one by one. Guys! Oh boy, looks like I forgot that the slightly spoiled ingredients of me? I will inquire about this incident later, Dante. Ooh, she might be disappointed in us. But for now, command us in this battle. Yep. Yeah. Faust, Faust might be a little bit disappointed in us. Just a little bit, though. <laughs> just, just a little bit. <laughs> okay. No, but seriously, I think those guys are pretty much the same as before, right? Paralysis, poise, haste. Pretty much. And only two waves this time around, now that we have the full team. Great! This is going to make things a lot, lot easier. So, there we go. Not so bad. But I have to say, the first couple of turns with this team is a bit of rough. Because their clash power is not really that high. They kind of rely on the head uh, rather than... Yeah, the head coins in order to keep going, but that's fine, right? That's fine. We just need to get used to the team first, and then at a later point of time, this is going to get through like butter, right? <laughs> totally. Okay. A touching reunion. Heathcliff and Don were both out cold, but I managed to survive thanks to the sinners who came for me. But I don't see the two unconscious sinners anywhere. Are they further in the factory? Did they get dragged further in? I guess they were, because they're still not deployable. But who did we find then? Because there's, there's a touching reunion, right? In a way, uh, thanks everyone! So how did you find me? We entered via the back door. Your signals were no longer detected within the bus premise. Then, every sinner was immediately summoned from their respective room for the search. And so soon after our break started! Dante, let's try not to do anything like this again, huh? Because that really bothered her. Even if you're the executive manager, rough behavior such as this poses a too great of a risk. Please be wary of that. Oh, I'm sorry. So, how did you guys find us? I have deduced it. As of late, Heathcliff was in a constant state of uneasiness. Considering the nature of our circumstances, I conjectured that there was all that he had to do before our arrival at Tecor. On the day in which the backdoor velocity silence echoed, Don made a relatively delayed return to the back door. And, come the next day, she requested from me and Miss Faust an encyclopedia of common symbols used in the city. Yes, Sir Faust lent her a few volumes. Ever since receiving the volumes, Miss Don sat next to me and perused the pages with a rather enthusiastic expression on her countenance, although I could not converse with her on account of my condition, you know, the seasickness. I do recollect that the following words were repeatedly uttered, cosplay, costume, Sack. In summation, I surmise that Miss Dawn witnessed a series of symbols that caught her attention when the sirens blared, and Faust was aware of the door on which those symbols were drawn. Based on that information, the sinners were able to find their way here. We engaged several entities of the corridor on our path to the store. Good thing that we ran into the weakling store, right? Otherwise, that could have been a border. An irreversible death of the sinners could have occurred in the process. Ah. Do you understand? Engaging hostile forces in your absence carries a certain degree of high-level risk. We could have been lost forever in some corner of the corridor as bodies, never to be revived 
or retrieved. Please comprehend the weight of your responsibility and the risk of your independent action could carry. You must survive, executive manager, no matter what. Do I make myself clear? You don't have to get that close, okay? I get it! I get it! <laughs> I've never seen Otis look at me like that before. Her gaze was cold and ruthless. Your survival was a lucky coincidence, Dante. The sequence of these symbols are not supposed to be interpreted in such a haphazard manner. I'm really sorry. I didn't know what else to say. We weren't supposed to go that deep into the factory either. This was just supposed to be a sneak peek. A sneak peek. <laughs> I believe that is enough, but... NDQ. I certainly have no idea about that one. Yeah, done. Heathcliff. Where's the... Where did the pair run off to? Oh, that's... I told him exactly as the events transpired. Seriously? How did you three even manage to survive this far? Alright, manager bot, I'm sure you've heard enough from the others, so I won't say more, but... Where exactly are we? Hey, which district is this? It's cold, we must be somewhere in one of the northern districts of the city. Or... We are not in the city. What do you mean with that? I mean that we are not in the city. Those intelligent organisms called gnomes are part of a species surviving the- Oh, we are in the outskirt! Commonly known as monsters of the outskirt. Monsters again? After all that we faced at the lake? They weren't exactly like a whale though. We could communicate with the gnomes. They were just- They were just like people. Just smaller. So we're in a completely different region of the outskirt. Would have liked to explore the area if the circumstances permitted it, but looks like the structure seems to have been custom built for the gnomes, considering how small everything is in here. If this is the outskirt, we can go back, right? As long as the door we enter through remains open. Yes. It is open for now. What if it closes? Then an unexpected journey begins. We have to track the distance from the outskirt back to the city, which would be a significant endeavor in both time and effort, which also indicates that Heathcliff is going to be very late for his appointment. Isn't that a bit dangerous? Oh, where did the sound come from, Ome? Eh? Ome! I struck gold, Ome! Get your tools, Amaze! Dante, come here to the back of the line, okay? The door stepped open and gnomes began flooding into the room. We prepare ourselves for battle. Well, I guess as long as Virgilus is back at the bus and interest that the door stays open, we should be going to be fine. I'm pretty sure Virgilus has no issues whatsoever keeping those gnomes away from us in our bus, right? But still, once he notices our absence, this is going to cause some SERIOUS ISSUES! <laughs> like really! He's gonna hate this! He's gonna hate this so much! <laughs> there we go! Kick to victory! Okay... No, but seriously, the norms aren't really so bad, right Ishmael? <laughs> we have an after cutscene? Okay, that's kind of real. I can see the similarity with humans, but they are certainly not human. Except of their odd verbal quirks, these monsters are impressively communicative. I don't even know if they could be categorized as monsters that way. The definition is often arbitrary, but some may call them monsters, yet others may call them members of a different sentient race. Hmm. I appreciate your analysis, but we should probably get moving. You know, it's then or now where Heathcliff and Donna and they might need our help. You always say the right things at the right time, Executive Manager. Exploring the outskirt area will carry higher risk than our usual operational ground. To ensure the manager's safety, we must first establish a more structured plan. Why are we just crash something? Well, I would say the easiest answer would be to leave the two of them. But the easiest path isn't always the right one, right? 
Ishmael kicked open the door the gnomes rushed in from. Come on, let's go. We'll protect the manager and save Heathcliff and Don. Good to see that she cares about them now, huh? <laughs> if this was pre Ahab, then she would have probably said it's their own fault. Just leave them behind. What should we care about? <laughs> but not today. Not today. She has improved herself. Ishmael starts to care for everyone. Especially seeing how Heathcliff kind of saved her during that one encounter with Ahab. So I guess maybe she's still grateful about that. If he didn't interfere, she might have been... Swallowed up by the pallet stuff, right? She must have remembered that, right? Nevertheless, I would say this is the perfect moment to make a little cut. In the next part, we're going to follow the gnomes, trying to find our Heathcliff and Don, and that crayon girl that got dragged alongside with them. And hopefully, find out a safe path back to our bus, before the door closes on us, right? Don't want to get stuck in the outskirts. Unless, of course, we were in an area where the library is, then maybe, but not in a completely different zone. <laughs> I don't want to get stranded in the outskirt. Heathcliff's appointment! Catherine! They're, they're waiting! <laughs> right? Anyways, until then! Bye-bye!